Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to use or fix a Surface with a bad SSD. Or if your Surface is stuck on the Windows logo and you can't boot into anything, it probably has a bad SSD. I'll show you a few ways how to diagnose in a few minutes. But I got to point out how bad Microsoft is with this stuff. This is a Surface Pro 5. It's only a few years old, but the SSD isn't replaceable, unlike the 4 and the earlier ones. Um, this process will work for other laptops also that have a sealed SSD, so we're just going to get right into it. The easiest way to tell if you have a bad SSD or not is trying to use a Windows installer drive. So what you're going to do is you're going to put the drive into the surface. So after the flash drive is plugged in, you'll want to power off the device. After you power off, you're going to want to click the power and the volume down button. So the easiest way is actually to hold the volume down button and then click the power button once and then let go and let's see if it boots from the flash drive. The light should start flashing in a second. Sometimes if that doesn't work, you can click the, uh, the volume down on the keyboard. Okay, so sometimes you have to wait a while, but the flash drive is rapidly flashing, so we know it's accessing the data. Now you just keep looking at the screen until you see the Microsoft like dots spinning around. Hey guys, so I waited a few minutes and it started spinning. Unfortunately, sometimes you have to wait for a while on these surfaces. Uh, don't ask me why. Some of them are really fast and some of them are really slow. After Windows, the installer loads up. Click Next. Install Now. going to load up. After you get to this screen, I accept. Custom. See, we couldn't find any devices. So it's not that Windows doesn't have a storage driver or not. It's just a dead SSD in this Surface Pro 5. So now we're going to get on how to fix it. All right, guys, so now we're on the computer side of things that we need to make the drive. So we're going to open Chrome and we're going to type in Windows 10 Media Creation Tool. You're going to click Download Windows 10 Disk Image ISO file. Wait for the page to load. Sometimes this Microsoft site is really slow and other times it's really fast. I couldn't tell you why. Anytime now, Microsoft. There we go. You're going to go down to create Windows 10 installation media. Download now. Media creation tool. You're going to click on it. Yes. We can minimize Chrome for now. Getting a few things ready. Okay, you're going to accept the notice again. <laughs> so we're going to click Create Installation Media. Now, this is the point where you can choose 
I like to choose 64-bit because most apps are more compatible now with 64-bit. Obviously, if you have less than 8 gigs of RAM, you might want to use 32. That's, you know, your decision. Uh, Windows 10, going to click Next. We're going to do the ISO file. That's what we'll need for the Win2 USB. So click Next. Uh, we're going to save it to the desktop. Windows, Save. All right, guys, so this is the screen it shows you when it's done. Burn the ISO file to a DVD. We can click Finish for now. It's going to clean up. Uh, we can go back to the browser, and we're going to search for Win to USB. And the site is going to be easyuefi.com. So it has Leo software. You're going to download the version 5.8 or whatever is current. Gonna click on it to open. Yes. English. So I already have it installed, but I'll just, you know, uninstall it and reinstall it for just for you guys to see. So I accept install. Yes. Next, create desktop, install. Okay. All right, it's installed. It opened the web page. So we're going to double click on it to open. Actually, this is the time that you should plug in your drive that you'll be using to put Windows to go on. So in my case, it's a Kingston 256GB drive in an in, in external enclosure. I'm going to just plug it in. There we go. So now we're going to open Win to USB. We're going to choose the ISO on the desktop. Okay, so the Win2 USB free does not allow you to use Windows 10 Pro. You can only use Windows 10 Home. Um, I'll show you one more difference. I highly encourage you to pay the 30 bucks for this program. It's really not that much money and it's going to be saving your computer. So support the developer if you can. So Windows 10 Home, next. The destination is going to be my Kingston drive. Okay, this is another thing. On the paid enterprise model or the professional model, you can do MBR for BIOS and UEFI. Um, on the free version, you can only choose one at a time. So since the Surface is a UEFI device, I'm just gonna choose the GPT for that. Are you sure you wanna delete all the data? Yes, I am sure. So it's gonna format. All right, so I always choose legacy. I really don't know what the other two do. I know in terms of partitioning, they're different. So we're gonna click next, use the entire drive. All right, so it's gonna install, you know, depending on your computer and depending on the how fast the drive is, this is gonna vary. Uh, I'll cut to when it's done and we'll go from there. All right, so this is the screen that shows when it's finished uh, writing to the external drive. Uh, what you're going to want to do now is you're going to exit from this program and you're going to want to plug in the flash drive into your Surface or uh, we're going to change some settings in the Surface BIOS first in case uh, it doesn't work out. All right, guys, you're going to want to boot into the BIOS by clicking the volume up button and make sure nothing is plugged in and you're going to be holding the power button and you just let go give it a few moments i don't know why this unit doesn't boot into the uh ufei bios right away um i have other surface laptop that does it right away i'll just cut to eventually when it comes on all right, after like a minute, it just booted into the UFEI. 
All right, so what you're gonna wanna copy these settings that I'm showing you for this boot configuration. You're gonna wanna uncheck Windows Boot Manager and internal storage. You're gonna wanna make sure enable alternative boot sequence is off. Uh, boot from USB has to be on. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. In security, you're also gonna wanna make sure uh, secure boot is disabled to none. Now, this is not necessary, but it definitely seems to speed up the boot process into the drive. Then you're gonna wanna click exit, and then you're gonna wanna plug in the USB drive with Windows 2 Go, and you're gonna wanna hold the volume down button, and then click power, and then let go of power, and then it, after like a minute or two, it should start loading the Windows. So after you made your Windows 2 Go drive, I use the Kingston right here. We're gonna plug it into the surface. Then we're gonna boot it up. We're gonna hold the volume down button. And this drive has an indicator light, so we'll see what it's doing. So be patient. Sometimes it takes a while to boot into this, especially the first time. All right, guys, about maybe like five to six minutes later, it finally started showing the dots. Uh, remember the steps are hold the volume button down and then click the power button and then watch for activity on your, you know, flash drive or hard drive. Uh, I guess one note as we're waiting for this to set up is I tried using some other USB 3 drives some of them worked, but they were really slow compared to a traditional 2.5 SSD or an NVMe drive. I would really recommend you use one of those instead. Now we're just gonna wait till uh, everything gets set up. It's, you know, it'll work like a regular Windows install. It's already installed onto the drive with Windows 2 Go, but it still has to download the local drivers for your machine. In this case, the Surface. Hey guys, we're finally in. Everything seems to be working fine, so I'm just going to go through the setup. Actually, we're not going to connect to the internet because it's going to ask me to connect to Microsoft. So we can connect after we create an account because this is Windows 10 Home. It's admin, no password. I'm just gonna leave all the telemetry stuff on. This is just for a test. All right, there we go, we're on the desktop. Now we need to install all the drivers because everything will be really slow. So just open Windows Update, let it scan for all the Surface drivers. Oh, forgot to connect to Wi-Fi. But already you can tell it's pretty fast for something running off our flash driver, SSD in this case. Retry. So this is all the updates it has to install, all the drivers for all the Surface things. When it's done, it should work really fast. We're just gonna wait. All right guys, so the update started installing. 
We're just gonna restart and make sure everything is good. All right, guys, we're back. Most of the updates, if not all, they're done. Uh, see, if you just wanted to fix your Surface and get back working and have Windows 2 go on an external drive, then that's it. You can stop watching. Uh, I'll give some more tools. So most of you probably have heard of Ninite. So we're going to use that to install some applications and just see how fast it goes. We're going to do Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Zoom iTunes, VLC, and WinRAR. So far, everything's working very smoothly. I'll open Task Manager so you guys can take a look. So this is the Surface Pro 5 with the i5-7300U and four gigs of RAM. The person I I'm fixing this for, uh, pretty much you know thought of it as a lost cause. It sat in his drawer for like a year because Microsoft wants you know something like five hundred dollars to replace it, which is more than this unit's worth. So at least this way, this person can just you know double side tape the enclosure to the back of the surface and have a usable computer instead of like waste. I'm pretty sure you can find multiple Surface units on eBay with like dead drives or Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Um, if you just need a computer or a tablet you wanna use, this is a great way to do it. Man, four gigs of RAM does not cut it these days, does it? But we just install Firefox and Chrome. The disk is, you know, not being used very much. All right, so some of you may want the stock Surface wallpaper back. What you can go is just open Chrome and just Google Surface Wallpaper Pack. The first, the second one from Wallpaper Hub, you can click Surface Collection. And then you can click which design of the Surface wallpaper you want. You know, the original one, this one shipped with it would have been the Mm, something like this, but this is from the Pro 6 and this is the 5. Some of these look really nice. The one from the Surface Pro 7 looks nice. We can download that. All right, there we go. So we have a fully functioning service of uh, surface again. You know, uh, you know, the downside of this is that like you have a USB device plugged in all the time for it to work. Uh, that's pretty much the only downside. You know, the upside is you get a usable computer again that functions fully. Is this a permanent fix? Probably not for most people, but. With uh, the way how it is today with COVID and getting your hands on laptops, sometimes it might be easy or hard or, you know, financially you can do it at the moment. Well, this is a great fix. Uh, thank you for watching today and I hope you guys like, comment, subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Thank you very much. Bye.